an encyclopedic dictionary of Sanskrit on historical principles is the biggest project of lexicography. It is not only in the sense of volume, but also the content of that book. It is based on historical principles and it is of encyclopedic nature. By that what is meant actually? Historical principles which indicates that the entire history of the language is depicted through the dictionary. The history of any language begins from the first available text written or oral, first available literature and it goes on covering the latest evidence, literary evidence of that language. So, to speak about the Sanskrit, the Vedas, the Rugved is the oldest available text of this language. So, the dictionary begins from the ever first occurrence of any word from the Rugved till the 19th century. So, entire history of the word, the meaning, say the word is absolute or it is uh, confined to certain period only or due, in the due course of the language, the meaning has changed, semantic expansion, expansion can be there, contraction can be there, entirely meaning is changed. So, all these things are depicted uh, in this dictionary. So, this is historical, based on historical principles, we mean that. It is encyclopedic in nature that it goes to cover as much as possible information on every aspect uh, of culture, geography and many other things are there. So, this is the nature of the dictionary. So, it cannot be compared with any other dictionary available for Sanskrit or any other language of that for that matter. The article of the dictionary is very important here. It has certain components. The vocable, the lemma or the basic head word, it is given in Devanagari boldface and similarly at the same time it is provided with Roman transliteration also. This dictionary is bilingual dictionary, Sanskrit English dictionary, English is the international language. So, the vocable is provided in Roman transliteration also, but while doing that we try to give as much information as possible. The lexicographer is endowed with minimum you know means, but he has to give maximum information. What are the tools for him? What are the means for him? He can use certain punctuations, brackets, cuts, uh, cross references. These are the limited means of a lexicographer. So, we try to do that. So, we give the information. Uh, translate, uh, Roman transliteration, but while doing that, we also introduce the semantic cut for compound words to facilitate the understanding of meaning. Similarly, if the word is drawn from the Vedic literature, then accent is a must thing to be recorded. So, accentual information for the Vedic words, uh, those are also given in while transliterating the word into Roman. Then certain uh, components of morphology, infix, prefix, those things are also to be explained. Then we give the grammatical information, correct grammatical category, parts of speech is recorded and every word, I mean there are words which are regular, irregular also and they have some idiosyncratic features. Lexicographer has to record them and as much as information is to be given, we try to do that. So, our grammatical information is very, very important. If you go through the entries uh, of the words, then you will find that sometimes the grammatical information itself runs columns after columns. So, this is the speciality of that uh, this dictionary. If you compare that with any other uh, dictionary, then you will not find, reader will not find this kind of information given. Then comes the meaning analysis. The meanings of the word Many issues are uh, actually concerned here, whether uh, like homophony, polysemy, uh, and these are the areas where the editor has to take utmost care. And the article is authored uh, when there are several meanings, then relatedness of the meanings, which meanings come together, close together, which are falling apart, what are the semantic fields, all these things are studied very carefully. Uh, 
to do that we go to the translations available, uh, the commentaries on ancient texts and some meaning components which are convinced to the editors uh, those are recorded there. Then to corroborate each meaning uh, we give the quotations from the literature and the speciality uniqueness of this dictionary is that it gives ample quotations from the text. If you go to other dictionaries or compare it with the available dictionaries, you will find that only popular texts are given, say Kalidas, Ramayana, Mahabharata, but it is not so. I mean, uh, this dictionary of Deccan College records many quotations and citations to justify, to corroborate the meaning that is given. We also take into account the available dictionaries, uh, both lexicons, uh, traditional lexicons, monolingual lexicons and also uh, famous dictionaries like Aptes Dictionary, Monier Williams Dictionary. So if we differ from those sources also, we record them in bracket at the end of the entry. So pick up any entry from this work, you will find that entire information regarding that word is given. So this is of great benefit for the researchers and it is the fundamental, very authentic source to understand the language and basically the words and the usage of the words and their meanings. Thank you. Namaste. I am Bhav Sharma from Department of Sanskrit and Lexography and I work as an editorial assistant in the department. This small presentation is regarding the use of technology in Sanskrit lexicography. And this is with special reference to the project which is being run in the Department of Sanskrit and Lexicography of the Deccan College under Sanskrit Dictionary Project. So let us have a brief overview of what Sanskrit Dictionary Project covers. Sanskrit Dictionary Project is the biggest project of its kind across all the languages of the world. It stands out by the virtue of huge corpus and the data collection in the history of any language. For this, we must know that it covers around 62 disciplines of Indian knowledge system, which is encoded in Sanskrit. It covers around 1500 primary texts for collection of head words. It is encyclopedic in nature, and the meanings given in this particular dictionary are arranged historically, which traces the development of meaning across time and discipline. So in the recent years, we have been, we have initiated the use of technology for the process of making of this dictionary at various stages. For this, we must know in general what the process of Sanskrit Dictionary Project is. Sanskrit Dictionary Project for, for completion of this project, the stages are uh, as follows. We first need to assign the datas, data that we have. So the data has been collected over a period of 25 years which has been digitized in a scanned format uh, in, in the in, in a earlier project. And this data uh, and this data is assigned to various scholars for, uh, for working on this particular project. The next step is the reference completion with the scholars do. Scholars are uh, given necessary data to be completed. They work on that those particular references and they complete those references along with citations and meaning meaning decision. The scholars also decide the meaning and assign special uh, meaning as per the context. And these meanings are later edited by the general editor and they are meticulously arranged in a format. The format is decided by the historicity. By historicity, we place change in the meaning of particular word, right from the first occurrence to the reference. And these references are arranged historically, which the first occurrence. Uh, and then we trace how the meaning has changed over a period of time and over a period of 62 displays that we have seen earlier. And this whole process goes through final editing by the general editor and his team, and the final product is published in our format until date. But recently, we are uh, we'll be launching our portal uh, very soon in which all the data which has been edited will be available to the general public in the same format. What we will be needing uh, in future for the dictionary is as follows. Till date, 60, uh, 35 volumes of the dictionary have been spread across 3,000 pages. And these contain more than 1.25 lakhs vocable. When I say vocable, it means the headword, and headword also includes some words. 
it is some fit the converse has multiple compounds multiple constituents so each uh, compound can have uh, two three or more than three components if we analyze each constituent as a fit but then more than 2.5 lakh cables have been covered in the, in this in this dictionary and these uh, need to be and these are required to be presented to the general public in a such a format in an online uh, online mode. Second is the project that we are following presently is a, a laborious project a process in which uh, physical ships are distributed to the scholars, the work on it, and a uh, uh, final recipe is prepared by them for their respective computers. But the whole process of dictionary making right from uh, completing the slips up to the decision of the meaning and arrange, arrangement in the, uh, arrangement historically the whole process should be customized as per the need of the dictionary so the second tool that we will be needing will be uh, an, an article authoring tool and the third tool will be the huge data of this dictionary demands that more and more people are included who can contribute towards the making of this dictionary and a tool needs to be developed so that more and more people can be included in that for this, we have been recently uh, granted a project by the Department of Science and Technology under the Science and Heritage Research Initiative, which is abbreviated as SHRI uh, by the central government. And our joint partner for this is CDEC Pune. So CDEC Pune is developing technological tools for us, whereas uh, we provide the, uh, the, the technical inputs for this. And the project has been named as Kosha SHRI. In this project, we are developing three tools. The first tool is development of an online portal. As we discussed earlier, the 35 volumes, which is spread across 6,000 pages and more than 2.5 like vocables, need to be made public, need to be made accessible to the public. And for this, we will need an online portal, which will have facilities such as uh, basic search, as well as advanced search, which will be required for the researchers. The second tool that is being developed under this project is article authoring tool. By article, we mean a complete uh, uh, entry of a dictionary along with all the meaning tags, uh, along with classification of meaning into shades and subshades and the arrangement historically. So a complete entry is called an article in a dictionary. And this process of article should be, we sh uh, there should be a customized tool for preparing this article. And this is the second tool that is being made. And the third tool is the facility for crowdsourcing. In crowdsourcing, all the people across the globe who are interested in this project and who are uh, and who can contribute towards it they will be uh, they will be given an opportunity to join and contribute in this uh, magnanimous task that has been taken up by deccan college for online portal uh, the tool that is being developed uh, the requ the requirements that we have is that we have 36 volumes of printed material which needs to be uh, put on on the portal we have more than 6000 pages and more than 1 lakh vocables as as we have discussed earlier and the whole data must be available through both general search as well as advanced search this process of digitization requires scanning of the printed pages but this scanning process is just the first step towards it the second step is the ocr for producing the text if we want to make any text available through search it should be ocr however this dictionary has many uh, technicalities and there are various uh, uh, small elements which are associated with an entry such as the grammatical category such as the meaning and there are some grammatical notes there are reference books there are different ways of giving references there are different ways of arranging them so all these elements they need to be identified as to what a general entry in a dictionary how many elements are present in a general entry and they need to be tagged so if we analyze this particular factor, the scanning and OCR only forms 40% of digitization of this dictionary, whereas the rest of the 60% is composed, is uh, concerned with identification of the elements and tagging of these elements. And this identification and tagging ultimately will result in a, a, a customized search for all the users across the globe. So this is a, a screenshot of the UI that we are using the legacy vocables means the already printed vocables are distributed to uh, uh, various scholars and they need to work on it this is a 
uh, UI, UI interface for the process that we are following. On the left hand side, you can see the scanned pages of the dictionary, which have already been printed. On the right hand side, above is the OCR text, which is produced by the software. And below, if we, uh, uh, we can see the data is been tagged by the software into various categories, which are on the right hand side, which is, which is tag actions, which is entry word, transliteration, grammatical category, subcategory, lemma, conspectors, etc. So OCR, up to the OCR of this text is just as, as we discussed earlier, it is just the 40%. And the rest of the part is the, the which is identifying the element and tagging of the element forms the core part of this particular project. And for that, this OCR has been customized only for this dictionary, especially for this dictionary. The second part that we are de developing in this uh, particular project is the article authoring tool. And this tool will facilitate uh, the use of technology, the use of technology uh, to the optimum level for producing new volumes of the dictionary. And this again, this tool again requires hundred percent percent customize customization of the tool because it depends on what is been expected and what is required by this particular project. The process involved in article authoring tool begins by assigning of the new vocables, which has not been completed. So there should be a process by which we can assign the vocables to different scholars. The scholars need to come, need to do, need to at the, at the first level, the scholar need to complete those references slips, which have been given to them. And this completion requires assigning, assigning of the grammatical data, adding citations, adding meaning and adding commentaries and other informations. These need to be, uh, look, uh, this need to be corrected by a second level of, of, of scholars who will arrange the meaning. All of them will arrange the meaning, they will classify the meanings and they will arrange it chronologically. And the final level will include uh, the general editor and his team for finalizing the meaning and giving a final uh, uh, output of the dictionary. This is a UI interface of our of the software that we have developed. So the first, the the page that you can see in front of you, basically consists of the vocable list which has been uh, given to the scholar. The second is when the scholar enters the vocable information, he can see the number of references that are present in those slips. As you can see, most of the references here are from Atharvet Samhita and Vajrasani Samhita. As per the vocables, these references, their numbers will change. This is the UI interface by which the scholar completes those particular slips. So as you can see on the right hand side on the on the on the above uh, image, uh, we can see the image of the slips which has been scanned. And on the left hand side, we can see the form, uh, which is um, most of the part of which is pre-filled uh, by reading of the image, which is on the right hand side. So as you can see, the vocable name, the references, and the reference number, all these are pre-filled. The scholar, he needs to read those particular references by going to the book, which you can see in the image, which is below. The page of the book is linked with the slip, and the page of the book opens. The scholar needs to go through that particular page to that particular reference, and he needs to determine how much of the citation is to be accepted, where, and in, at the same time, he needs to determine the meaning of that particular word occurring in that context. So the scholar needs to work on these two aspects, which are largely dependent on human knowledge. So uh, both deciding on the meaning as well as citations, all other aspects through this use of technology are mostly pre-filled. The next part is for the second uh, level of the scholars who will arrange the meaning and do the additions. So as you can see, a particular element, uh, a word such as Abhivad, which is a big entry, has more than 18 meanings. And these meanings, uh, various citations have been assigned to those meanings, and they have been arranged here chronologically by the software. The software itself arranges them historically. All, the, uh, all that needs to be done by the scholar is to determine the exact meaning and to identify the shade in which it has been used in that particular context. The rest of all the work, which is arrangement of the word, arrangement of uh, uh, that particular typology, which is required for the dictionary is been done by the software automatically. And this is something what a final preview of the dictionary will look like. It will contain the word, it will contain its uh, 
transliteration it will contain the grammatical category it will contain all the citations along with the reference books as well as reference mode which is there and they will be arranged as per the meanings so this was the second tool that we saw which is called article authoring tool in which a uh, use of technology is used uh, technology is being used heavily in this project the third part which is uh, which is uh, part of this project is the facility for crowdsourcing the article authoring tool as we have seen uh, particular scholars are given a particular uh, are, are id is created for particular scholars and work is assigned to them those ids can also be created by scholars who are not employed directly by the deccan college but who are scholars of sanskrit and wish to contribute in this uh, project directly through their knowledge a separate id is created for those scholars and works are assigned to them along with uh, along with a formal training uh, for anybody to join this particular crowdsourcing process there would be a formal training in the field of lexicography because lexicography is a specialized subject and it and it need, it requires formal training and uh, when they complete the training which would uh, spread across 3 weeks to 4 weeks after that those uh, uh, references or those particular work can be assigned to those scholars and they can work on them through the same article authoring tool which we have seen in the last process so this small overview gives uh, this small presentation gives us an overview how the technology is being used presently in this uh, project of sanskrit dictionary project which is being run by deccan college which is run in deccan, deccan college the use of technology for us will result in these five uh factors which are necessary for any project of such magnanimity which is being run across the globe first it will result in swift pro swift progress of the uh, of the project because this reduces time which is which it reduces the physical time of the scholars in completing those things which can be prefilled by the software itself this software also results in more and more accuracy because the uh, because the basic data such as the name of the book or the references numbers they are prefilled and therefore the accuracy level because they are prefilled from the prefilled data and therefore the accuracy level in that is is increased similarly the final product the typological errors which a, a lot of time scholars spend a lot of time in in proof, proof, proof checking the final proofs but this particular software will generate the final uh, format of the dictionary is automatically so that time of uh, creating in that creating of generating that format is also saved through this through, through this uh, software this software will also enable us for collaborations so since since all this is a web based tool we can collaborate with various institutes across indian knowledge system uh, branches and 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 we can and and we can uh, sorry, and we can collaborate with them uh, for for working on this Indian knowledge systems. Fourth would be the online portal will result in global reach of this particular dictionary, and it will be used by more and more scholars across the globe, and in a searchable format, so they can use it for their research, for both fundamental research as well as research based on this fundamental data which is being created here at Deccan College. And fifth is this will this will uh, serve as a research tool. For not only this project, but this will lay a path for uh, for development of tools on a similar line for research pro uh, research projects which are going on in Indological field and in Indian knowledge system field across the globe. In the end, we can summarize this small discussion by saying that this tool is only of its kind which has been undertaken by uh, the Encyclopedic Dictionary of Sanskrit and Historical Principles. The use of technology which has been used here has optimized the whole of the process. The process of creating a tool, especially a technological tool, requires a lot of customization, which requires an input from uh, persons who have been working in this project for, for long. So the tools need to be developed, uh, needs to be customized as per the demand of the project. And this particular tool, which we have demonstrated here in short, it, it, uh, it represents a model for development of use of technology in any such project which has been used uh, which has been run across the globe so i thank you for this hello 
the Encyclopedic Dictionary of Sanskrit on Historical Principles is work of great significance and importance for the study of Indian culture and knowledge systems. It was conceived by Professor Asim Katre, the then director of Deccan College. The work on it started in 1948 and for about 24 years there was work on uh, listing all the words in different texts starting from the Rig Veda. About 1500 texts were consulted by more than 40 scholars who worked day and night on collecting the data. And then in 1973, the dictionary started to be published. About three years ago, 2020, with the collaboration of the Center for the Development of Advanced Computing, Pune office, and a generous grant from the Department of Science and Technology, the project began to progress uh, in a way that could only have been imagined. Today, now we are ready to start the use of the dictionary. Uh, there are multiple uses of the dictionary various modes of using it. For example, if you want to look at the development of the meanings of words from the Rig Veda, Rig Veda to the present, we can do so. We want to focus on a given shade of meaning. Again, we can do so. If you want to look at the text in which a particular meaning was used within a certain period, for example, uh, 1000 AD to 1500 AD, you can focus on that. And in this way, the dictionary truly has been come to be used as an encyclopedia of uh, Indian knowledge systems. We hope that we'll be able to explore the various fields of knowledge. About 62 have been listed, including fields such as astronomy, astrology, uh, chemistry, metallurgy, philosophy, logic, and so on. And so these the various meanings and uses of words will also be classified according to the disciplines to which they are relevant. <coughs> we are uh, ready to launch the dictionary in about a month's time. And uh, we hope speedy progress with uh, great focus on the various themes of the Indian culture, uh, science and technology. And uh, we are very thankful to the central government as well as the government of Maharashtra for having supported it throughout with <coughs> grants for both the researchers, professors, for the grants for publications and the distribution of knowledge and we look forward to great <coughs> concentration of work and completion of it for the general benefit not only of India but of the whole world. Thank you. Namaskar, my name is Dr. Shridhar Avdhut Lohokare. I have been in Pandit Devadat Govinda Patil Ji in Patshala for 10 years. न्याय शास्त्र और मीमांसा शास्त्र का अध्ययन किया है। तब वो जब मैंने शास्त्र का अध्ययन किया था, तब उस उस शास्त्र में वो वो आने वाली संकल्पनाएं मुझे पता थी। पर मैं जब यहाँ आया, तब मुझे पता चला कि उस शास्त्र की जो संकल्पनाएं हैं, वो दूसरे शास्त्र में भी कहाँ कहाँ है, या उनके कैसे अर्थ होते मुझे यहाँ आकर पता चला या मैं उन शब्दों को बहुत अच्छे से यहाँ समझ पाया इस डिक्शनरी प्रोजेक्ट में क्योंकि यहाँ पर कोई भी शब्द जब आता है तो उसके सारे संदर्भ हमें मिल जाते हैं जैसे अभी उदाहरण के लिए अगर कहना हो तो प्रत्यय शब्द है तो व्याकरण में जाएंगे तो उसका सफिक्स ऐसा अर्थ होगा अगर न्याय में जाएंगे या मीमांसा में जाएंगे तो उसका अर्थ होगा ज्ञान और जब और दूसरे इसमें जाएंगे तो उसका अर्थ होगा विश्वास तो ऐसे अलग अलग 
अर्थ एक ही शब्द के हो सकते हैं ऐसी बहुत सारी बातें यहाँ आके पता चली जैसे और भी रूढ़ यौगिक योग रूढ़ यौगिक रूढ़ ऐसे बहुत सारे शब्द शास्त्रों में हमें पढ़ने के लिए मिलते हैं पर उन शब्दों के अर्थों के बारे में हर शास्त्र में क्या कहा गया है या पहले किस शास्त्र में उसके बारे में कहा गया और ये सारी संकल्पनाएं कैसे विकसित हुई इसका पूरा एक हिस्टोरिकल हमको अगर जानना हो तो इसका बहुत बड़ा हमें फायदा होगा तो हिस्टोरिकली यानी काल से और हर एक विषय में उस संकल्पना के बारे में जानने के लिए इसका बहुत बड़ा लाभ होगा और खासकर जब हम भाषा शास्त्र या लिंग्विस्टिक्स का अध्ययन करते हैं जैसे सीमेंट लेक्सिकल सीमेंटिक्स वगैरह तो यहाँ पर हर भाषा के हर शब्द को जानने के लिए हमें खास करके जो भारतीय भाषा है आधुनिक भारतीय भाषा है तो उनका मूल हमें संस्कृत में मिल जाता है तो ऐसे भाषा शास्त्र का अगर हमें अध्ययन करना हो तो इस प्रोजेक्ट का उस दृष्टि से भी बहुत ज़्यादा महत्व होगा धन्यवाद नमस्ते आई एम स्टैंडिंग हियर इन फ्रंट ऑफ द कॉर्पस द सोर्स बुक्स ऑफ एन एनसाइक्लोपेडिक डिक्शनरी ऑफ संस्कृत ऑन हिस्टोरिकल प्रिंसिपल्स basically we have uh, all the 62 branches of sanskrit uh, and the text related to these 62 branches uh, covered in our dictionary project here we see the uh, corpus of vedic texts and uh, vedic texts actually covers a lot of uh, time uh, period uh, time period also and uh, also many texts are covered in this almost all the texts are covered in uh, encyclopedic dictionary right from the samhitas then brahmanas then aranyakas upanishads then sutra literature all and their commentarial literature all these texts are covered here so how this vedic texts are dealt in the dictionary actually all of us know that vedic language has accent and due to the accent the meaning of the words changes and this particular dictionary it records the accent of words and gives different meaning if it is there because of the accent for example take the a very famous example of indra shatru indra shatru means uh, this particular compound can be dissolved in two ways indraha shatru hu yasya and indrasya shatru hu and accordingly ac accent changes uh, therefore uh, the accent is very important part in the um, in the language in vedic language for vedic words giving meanings of vedic words and that is recorded in this particular dictionary thank you namaste i am samhita joshi i am standing here right beside the section of vyakarana vyakarana means grammar so here we have number of books of sanskrit grammar panini is one of the famous grammarians of sanskrit but we all we have panini in grammar as well as non panini in grammar texts so panini has written his ashtadhyayi on which we have number of commentaries which date back from 4th century bc to uh, 18th or 17th century bc but along with these commentaries we also have some of the non panini in grammars so say for example we have chandra vyakarana we have jainendra vyakarana shakatayana vyakarana mukda bodha vyakarana there are multiple grammar grammatical schools which we have and which we see flourished after the panini or alongside the panini and we have documented all those grammars in our dictionary project and we also refer to number of vocables number of words belonging to these non paninian grammatical texts as well so here we have the array of not only paninian grammar but also other grammars of sanskrit which one can visit and see here in the dictionary project namaste uh, i have been learning indian classical instrumental and vocal music since my childhood and i was unaware of uh, original sanskrit treatises in this field after joining this project i came across uh the treatises uh, related to music such as sangeeta makaranda sangeeta parijata sangeeta ratnakara etc and now i can trace back some of the concepts 
that are used and applied uh, even today in uh, presenting the music, in presenting the concert. And I can also trace uh, their historical development using Encyclopedic Dictionary of Sanskrit on Historical Principles. Uh, coming from the Vedantic background, uh, we, we get to introduce the very few systems uh, when we are studying. But here, after uh, working in Sanskrit Dictionary project, we get to know various systems, not only the Acharya Parampara, along with that Trika system is an additional system which is introduced over here. So, a scholar who uh, sees this dictionary or who gets, uh, the scholar gets benefited from this dictionary, the various schools of Vedanta at a glance. Namaskar. I am pursuing my PhD in the area of epigraphy and uh, since no other previous dictionary deals with epigraphical uh, words and their meanings on a larger scale, uh, this, is the, uh, this is the unique feature of encyclopedic dictionary. Uh, it is the only project where one could find all the inscriptional words and their meanings uh, in exhaustive manner. Thank you. Namaskar, I am Dr. Rushali Bhosle. I am working in the last 14 years in the Koshe Shastra Vibhag. When we talk about the Sanskrit Sahitya, we come to our face as a person, Kalidas, Bhavabhuti, Stotra Vangmai, Puran Vangmai. But when I started working in Koshe, I knew that this is a very good Lalit Vangmai, but there is also a lot of things here. जैसे एक संस्कृत में एक शाखा है तंत्र वांग में जिसे हम माइनर साइंसेस बोलते हैं तो उस माइनर साइंस में जो किताबें हैं जो ग्रंथ है सिक्स सेंचुरी से ट्वेल्व सेंचुरी तक लिखी गई वो मुझे यहाँ मिली उस पर मैंने काम किया तो जैसे वेटनरी साइंस पे है अश्वजी किस्सा शालीहोत्र और गज शास्त्र पे है मातंग लीला हस्तायुर्वेद और उसके बाद जब मुर्गया शास्त्र पे हम जाते हैं तो शैनिक शास्त्र नाम का एक ग्रंथ मिलता है जिसमें उत्तराखंड के राजा रूपचंद ने वो लिखा है उसके बाद हमें एग्रीच एग्रीकल्चर में जो सब्जेक्ट है उस पर भी कृषि पराशर करके एक ग्रंथ मिलता है जो पराशर ऋषि ने लिखा है और उसके बाद जो आता है वो है स्पोर्ट्स स्पोर्ट्स पर भी संस्कृत साहित्य में बहुत ग्रंथ लिखे गए हैं जैसे चतुरंग दीपिका करके एक ग्रंथ है जो चेस आज जो चेस खेला जाता है उस पर वो लिखा गया है उसके बाद गंजीफा खेलनम करके एक ग्रंथ है ऐसे माइनर साइंसेस और एक ही मैंने सेक्शन बोला है ऐसे बहुत सारे सेक्शंस यहाँ किए गए हैं जिसका हमें बहुत फायदा हो सकता है और नए रिसर्चर को भी बहुत फायदा हो सकता है धन्यवाद